Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends. Welcome to the National Gallery of Zimbabwe. Before we embark, I would like to recognize the presence of members of the diplomatic call here present. Uh, Simonetta, who is the acting ambassador to Italy, who is our host in Italy, as we do our Zimbabwe pavilion in at the Venice Biennale 2021, 2022, which was supposed to be 2021, but it was postponed because of the COVID-19, which we are all in as the world. And I would also want to recognize our board members here present, Mr. Deketeke, representing our chairman, Dr. Solomon Gramatun, who is not here present with us. Welcome, Mr. Deketeke. I would also want to recognize the presence of Director of Arts in the Ministry of Youth, Sports, Arts and Recreation. also want to recognize the presence of uh, Roland, who is the British Council Director, Jacques, the Alliance Francais Director, and we also have other visitors here who are coming from the United States of America, the Ambassador of Tanzania, Mze. Thank you very much for coming members of the media and members of the corporate world who are here present with us for this important launch. This launch is a project that we started as a country. It's a project that we started many years ago. It's called the Zimbabwe Pavilion at the Venice Biennale. The 2022 is going to be our sixth edition. And as a sixth edition, we decided to also create a project which is called Friends of the Zimbabwe Pavilion. Friends of the Zimbabwe Pavilion Friends of the Zimbabwe Pavilion project is a project that we are in collaboration with Kisa Art Kisa Art Director Frida Isingoma She's actually live. She's going to join us. She's from the United Kingdom, originally from Uganda, but working and practicing in the diaspora in the United Kingdom in London. So the collaboration between ourselves and Frida, we've been able to come out with this project, which we think it is important to complement the support that we get from our Minister of Youth, Sports, Arts and Recreation to support the idea of the brand Zimbabwe, to support the presence of those artists that will always fly our flag high at the Zimbabwe Pavilion. The Zimbabwe Pavilion, when it was founded, it was founded under the need to actually support the practice of the Zimbabwean contemporary artist. But it was also founded under the armpits of the non-presence of African country pavilion at the Venice Biennale. We know very well that the Venice Biennale is like the World Cup of Visual Arts or the Olympics of Visual Arts. But for many, many years since it was founded, way back in the 18th century, the presence of African countries at the Venice Biennale has been very, very limited. So the Zimbabwean government, with its institution, the National Gallery of Zimbabwe, we saw it fit to actually start this project. But we cannot do a project of this nature without you, the friends of the Zimbabwe Pavilion, without you, the corporate industry of Zimbabwe, without you, the diplomatic circle of Zimbabwe, those are stationed in Zimbabwe. And here I would like to mention that um, our first Zimbabwe Pavilion in 2011, where we took four artists, it was founded with the assistance and the coordination via the British Council with Andrea Rose, who was the head of visual arts at the British Council, and with the British Council director. And I'm happy that the British Council director, Roland, is here with us because the National Gallery of Zimbabwe, when it was founded in 1957, the founding director of the National Gallery was none other than Frank McEwen was the British Council Director in Paris at that moment, and he was also looking after the Henry Moore Foundation, 
or the Henry Moore collection in um, Paris. So the relationship between ourselves and the British Council is not new. It's a relation that was mooted many years ago because one, of our colonial past, two, because of Frank McEwen and Sir Stephen Cotthold, who donated a huge chunk of money towards the construction of the gallery. But as a patron, he played an important role and left us with a huge collection that we cherish as a nation. With the Italian relationship, for me, the friendship started in 2011. But you go back to 2001, when I was a curator in residence at the Centre Pascal in Switzerland, in Biel. There was a trip for me to be in residency for three months and later on to visit the Venice Biennale. When we arrived at the Venice Biennale in 20, 2001, myself and Pet Mautra, who is a famous South African artist, we arrived there, but we were shocked to see the limited, uh, the non-existence of any African country pavilion. So that's when the dream started. And in 2005, we, in 2005, we tried to do the Zimbabwe pavilion, but it was not the right time. Later, in 2011, that's when it was born. But why I wanted to give this context is for you to understand that the idea of promoting Zimbabwean art is something which is very important to the National Gallery of Zimbabwe. It's something which is very important to those that feel that there is a need for Africa's presence at some of the global platforms. We cannot keep on complaining as African nations whilst the cake is being eaten by others. It is up to us as a continent, it is up to us as a team, and this is why our teaming up with Frida, who is an investment banker based in London, but also a big art collector who is also interested in the developing an art ecosystem in the continent. That's why we have decided to come out with this project, which we think it is an opportune moment for you to join hands with Zimbabwe to be able to create a platform for 2022 Venice Biennale. And why it is also special is because many people have not traveled in so many years because of the COVID-19. For the past two years, this is, uh, when it comes to 2022, it's gonna be a very special. And later on, I'll introduce the curator of the Zimbabwe Pavilion in 2022, who is going to introduce us to the team of artists that were introduced early this year by our Honorable Minister, Dr. Kirsty Coventry, to, uh, to the rest of the world. But I would like her to introduce these artists once again as we charter a new territory of creating those that want to join us as we celebrate the creativity of the Zimbabwean contemporary artist at this global stage called Venice Binale. Without saying much, I would like to call upon um, Mr. Deketeke, who is our board member, but he is also the CEO for Zim Peppers here present with us to say his remarks. Thank you. Afternoon. I think it feels good to come out uh, once in a while, huh? even though we are covering our noses and our mouths, uh, COVID didn't cover our eyes. Then the ass wouldn't make sense at all. But I think it's good that um, uh, you came to support during these difficult times, that people are really staying in their offices, uh, staying away from possibility of uh, catching COVID. Let me you know, uh, acknowledge the ambassador, for um, the acting ambassador, for coming to support um, the government. Uh, I think there's been a lot of work being done uh, by this team in terms of supporting the National Gallery. Uh, so we really appreciate uh, the work that you are doing to support the gallery. Let me also recognize uh, other government officials. I see my friend there, Moyo, 
uh, we haven't seen each other for a long time, but you know, coming out uh, to support uh, my friend Ray here, uh, now he's chairman of ZTA, uh, which means in, the, in that whole thrust to promote tourism, we are in it together. And the arts, especially the visual arts, will play their part. And Dev's are just coming out from Costa Rica, uh, doing also some work for Zimbabwe out there, and then just coming out to say, you know, let's do this together, because it is important. I was just speaking to Roland earlier on and talking about um, staying in and coming out, uh, that this is a real opportune time to you know, come out and, and, and play a part. I might not be able to mention everyone by name, but I hear also that the uh, Tanzanian ambassador is here with us. Welcome, sir, uh, to support this noble cause. Uh, maybe to say, oh, protocol observed. I see there's a, there's a team coming out of uh, Washington, uh, just coming to be part of us. I think we were starved of entertainment that looks at our eyes uh, and making sure that we are fed visually. I was asked by the chairman of the National Gallery last night, <laughs> who is stuck in India, because he had to do a last minute COVID test. And I think he was given 48 hours. I was in Jobek, and they were giving us two hours. So I don't know who is ahead, <laughs> us or India. But two hours, you could get your test, and you could get onto your plane and come back home. So I am reading his speech. These are not my words. These are his speech. But you know, as my chairman, I am bound by the same words, Rafael. Uh, you can report that I did the best that I could to represent him. The Zimbabwean Pavilion will enter its fifth iteration in April of 2022. With that in mind, the National Gallery of Zimbabwe's partner, Kisa, Kisa Art, has formulated the means to augment Zimbabwe's presence or the Olympics of the art world like um, uh, Rafael just said. This is one of the biggest platforms for artists to come together. The Friends of the Zimbabwe Pavilion is a vehicle that is meant to not only support the growing contemporary art scene in Zimbabwe and harness audiences across the world. Since my appointment as chairman, this is Dr. Gorama Tunu, not me, uh, as chairman of the Board of Trustees, I've observed the Pavilion of Zimbabwe's crucial role in the professional development of artists and business development strategies within the gallery. Both, fast, both facets are testing to the National Gallery's acts of guidance on promotion of visual art from Zimbabwe within the Republic and abroad. Herein lies the opportunity for corporations like ZTA and patrons to seize a marketing and publicity coup, to have your brand presented as a benefactor of Africa's most consistent exhibitor at the premier event in the global art world. The government of the Republic of Zimbabwe supported the Pavilion of Zimbabwe from its inception in 2011. Now, with the maturity of the platform, the general support of businesses and institutions will go a long way in growing our brands together for the good of our art ecosystem and the strengthening of public and private partnerships across the board. There will be an interconnection of business, political and thought leaders within a rich melting pot of discerning art lovers, cultural producers and collectors viewing your association with the pavilion on the global stage. Diverse packages are on offer and your support will be greatly appreciated. Most importantly, we'll synergize your brand with the best of Zimbabwe's art. I endorse as Dr. Gurama Tunu the Friends of Zimbabwe Pavilion, and encourage you all to support this new initiative. Thank you for coming out to support this, and we hope that um, uh, the Zimbabwean Pavilion will be a great success. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Degateke, uh, representing our chairman, Dr. Gramatunu. And I'm sure we have walked this path with uh, Dr. Gramatunu, but not only with him alone, but also with Mr. Deketeke, with his papers, they've walked this path where they've created visibility for Zimbabwean artists, those who have started going from 2011 up to the present. So we thank you, sir, for that support. It's now my pleasure to call upon Madame Simonetta to say her remarks. Thank you.
It's quite complicated to read with the mask and glasses, as you know, I think, no? Yeah. Thank you. First of all, I want to just thank you for the, for the invitation. Then I would like to say, dear all, dear colleague, dear friends, because in this environment we, we should call each other friends. I have to remove the mask, sorry, I cannot read. I am very honored to be here representing the Italian government, who has extended an invitation to the National Gallery of Zimbabwe to participate at the 59th uh, edition of uh, the Venice Biennale, which will take place from April to November next year, 22. This being the sixth consecutive edition where Zimbabwe, being the first African country to participate constantly, will once again be hosting a national pavilion. The Venice Biennale represents a really a, a powerful platform to showcase the richness and the excellence of Zimbabwean and African art on the most prestigious global art stage. Due to this platform, several artists that exhibited in Zimbabwean pavilion have gone on uh, to achieve international success, like uh, Raphael told before. So the creation of uh, Friends of Zimbabwe Pavilion will not only bolster the cultural relationship between our two countries, but he will increase the growth of the Zimbabwean art ecosystem and the visibility of Zimbabwean artists globally. It, for this reason, I think the the participation, uh, the, the, your support, it's very important to support Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe in this occasion. Thank you very much. Thank you to all of us, all you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Simonetta. I, I, I think I would like to stress to say our relationship with the Italian embassy has been great. They've supported the um, stay of most of the Zimbabwean artists that have traveled to the Venice Biennale. So let's give them another round of campaign. <laughs> and also the project we did many years ago after Venice in 2013, which was um, um, the Kariba construction. The, the work that um, a number of artists did for the Kariba construction, which is in Kariba, and um, those artists, their work were juxtaposition, the work of Portia and Virginia and other artists at the Pigorini Museum in Rome. So that was supported by Salini Impregillo, which is a, a, an Italian company that is based here in Zimbabwe, but also in other parts of Africa. But they are more into constructing. They constructed Tokem Kosi Dam. But they didn't only do that, but also supported that project, which I think is a very beautiful project. Our ambassador, Mubi, was still the ambassador to Italy, and now she's the, uh, working on a project which we're also working together for the Expo Dubai, where she's the commissioner. And the National Gallery of Zimbabwe is also taking about seven artists to Expo Dubai for the exhibition that will take place there at Aka Gallery. So allow me to call upon um, our curator, and I would like to take this opportunity to also say I'm now passing the baton to the next curator of the Zimbabwe Pavilion, who is none other than Fadzai Muchema. She's currently in Cape Town, where she's doing her master's. So she's going to join us virtually to introduce the theme of the Zimbabwe Pavilion and the artist of the Zimbabwe Good Pavilion. In Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Fazai Chairman, the curator for the sixth edition of the Zimbabwe Pavilion in Venice for 2022. 
I'm working with the artist um, Christian Kwaji, a woman in Makondera. We're not in charge of the students in Sekiro. So the Venice Biennale remains the biggest arts festival in the world. It's a, it's a great opportunity for artists to showcase on a global scale and lend their voices um, on discourses that shape art practice. Zimbabwe has a chance to spotlight what the art community has to offer, despite what the country is going through. The political nature of the Biennale encourages diverse readings of the art market, art practices, and nation states to shift and sustain narrative change on a global scale, and we want to participate. The theme for the Zimbabwe Pavilion is I do not the sign, and is an exploration of legacies, death and loss, and what becoming good ancestors might look like. Thank you. Uh, thank, you, thank you very much, uh, Fazai. Very short and precise. And I would like to say that um, I leave uh, these artists in capable hands. And one of the artists at the, who is going to take part, Walen Mapondera, is here. And the rest of the artists are in South Africa. Uh, the other two are in South Africa. The other one is in New York. So I'm sure I will also ask Walen to interact with you guys. So maybe we can switch over to Frida Isiningoma. Thank you. Frida, we can start the conversation on why you think it is important for us to be to have a pavilion. Okay. Maybe Frida, why do you think it is important for both local and international corporates to be friends of the Zimbabwe Pavilion? Can you hear me? It's, it's the new normal and <laughs> we have to keep trying and uh, Um, uh, it's important for 
for particularly local uh, corporates to support this. Um, because it's a local story, you know, we're talking about local artists um, that are responding and producing incredible art that is basically now narrating and telling stories uh, of Zimbabwe. Um, and I think it's important then for, for corporates and, and collectors and patrons on the ground to really support those stories because artists are such an important part of, of today's storytelling. A lot of people talk about other parts of the creative economy like music and film, but we mustn't forget about the power of visual, visual artists. And visual artists have told the African story for centuries. And given that you are talking about the local stories, and how are those local stories perceived internationally? I would also want to say how we met with Frida. It was also because of the Venice Biennale. That's how we met. I've just seen another question. How are the local stories perceived mm -hmm. internationally? Mm -hmm. um, in terms of Zimbabwean stories, um, I have to say as a collector, I've always been fascinated by the Zimbabwean stories. I lived in South Africa for 10 years, and, uh, and in that period I was able to collect um, Zimbabwean artists as well. And I was always fascinated, not just even by the story, but also by the, also by the level of talent in Zimbabwe. And it's through, it's through the, the, the buying of visual arts and being around it, and being around the artists that tell the stories, that you learn more about the culture. And even within Africa itself, we need, we need this to be an African story as well, and not just local to Zimbabwe, because we learn about our shared culture, we learn about our shared issues as well. You know, a lot of the issues that um, are fundamental to Zimbabwe also run through the rest of Africa too. And by sharing it in that Zimbabwean story, we not only learn about Zimbabwe, we also learn about ourselves. So these local stories are perceived in such a emotional and, and almost, uh, as well as humane, but almost like a, a family story in the rest of Africa. Internationally, if we're looking at how visual arts are, um, are a powerful way of telling stories, um, it's important that we have the visual arts out there that are from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is very well regarded in terms of, of, of visual arts production. And again, it's because of the immense talent in Zimbabwe. I've been in many corners with collectors of African art that have always talked um, quite fondly, you know, and admirably about the level of talent in Zimbabwe. So having this platform at the, at the Venice Biennale is such a powerful international platform. Um, as you, you explained, Raphael, it's almost the Olympics of, of, of visual arts. And it's important to showcase the Zimbabwean story on there and also the African story on there. So this is such a proud moment for, not just for Zimbabwe, but also for the rest of Africa. And the fact that this is, um, you have been consistent in producing this success story is wonderful. And this can almost be used as an indelible blueprint across Africa on how we can showcase African art on platforms like the Venice Bina. Okay, thinking about those who are in this audience who want to be friends, yourself and myself and the National Gallery team, we have built this uh, Friends of the Zimbabwe Pavilion. What can they get if they join the Friends of the Zimbabwe Pavilion? Uh, they 
lot of people who want to support as public collectors. There are many people who want to support as, as art patrons, you know, as art enthusiasts. And in doing so, we, what we crafted was, was anything um, um, from, as, from a lower level to a higher level where corporates could also help us uh, in building the success of the next edition. And what it does, what it does, even for collectors as well as patrons and, and corporates, is, is, allows, is allows them to join us in this journey. And joining us in this journey means being part of the event where we showcase the artists. Part of the events actually where we network between ourselves um, and talk about art and understand the stories that are coming out of Zimbabwe and what that means. Part of the events actually as well as at the National Gallery of Zimbabwe, so not everything is, 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 at, the, is at the Venice Biennale itself. Um, and what's wonderful about participating in events at events the National Gallery of Zimbabwe is it has an amazing collection of past exhibitions at the Venice Biennale that are there to see. And um, as far as we know, it's the only, it's the only it's a Venice Biennale collection in the world, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. And what this does, you know, we're going to have many events that are virtual and in person, um, where an individual or a corporate um, so basically will be able to uh, um, reach a different audience as we'll showcase that they are supporters of the pavilion. Um, and of course there will be events, you know, private uh, and very exquisite events at the Venice Biennale that they'll be able to participate in as well, as well as have entrance to some of the events happening in Venice at the time. Looking back at the previous uh, Zimbabwe pavilions from 2011 to 2019, what can you say about um, Africa's presence at the Venice Biennale, which has gone ups and downs and um, in respect to the idea of continuity? Zimbabwe 
Uh, th thank you, thank you, Frida. I, I think um, the support for the Zimbabwe, Friends of the Zimbabwe Pavilion would actually go a long way. Our dream as a country and as a pavilion at the Venice Biennale is to actually relocate our venue from Church Santa Maria de la Pieta to uh, somewhere near the Arsenale, where that's the epic center of the Venice Biennale, which is near Giardini. And that for us, as a long-term project can only be supported by our government, yes, but by this project, which is the Friends of the Zimbabwe Pavilion. But I think it is important for us to understand that next year is a different year, and we would like to actually go with a number of partners that will partner us to the Venice Biennale and expose them to this hive of activity that will take place that opening week that everybody of who is who in the arts, they will all be at the Venice Biennale. And this is a very opportune moment to interact. And we have two Pungue Nights, which will take place at the Venice Biennale. And the Pungue Nights are actually a reminder of those who grew up during the liberation struggle of how our comrades managed to source support from the people on the ground. So those Pungue Nights are something where we would like to bring them to the Venice Biennale to actually interact with all those people that are coming from New York, from London, from Paris, from Hong Kong, from Beijing, from Shanghai, from across the world. And we know that we also have other friends across the world who are listening to the, this afternoon to also join hands on this project called Friends of the Zimbabwe Pavilion. Can you hear me, Frida? Brilliant. Thank you, Raphael. And you know, what, one thing, one, one question that I, I always receive when talking about the Friends of the Zimbabwe Pavilion is, is how important has it been for the National Gallery itself to have spearheaded the Venice Biennale uh, Pavilion? When we started uh, talking about the Zimbabwe Pavilion, with my former boss, Mrs. Doreen Sibanda. It's something which we talked about in, in one of our meetings. And right from there, everybody who was here managed to understand where we were coming from. And for us, it was important because we felt that there was a need for an African country pavilion at Venice. Because when in 20, 2007, there was the so-called African pavilion. The African pavilion caused us to really rethink about Africa. Africa is not a country. Africa is one of the largest continent on earth. So the idea of having an African pavilion was kind of an insult to us as uh, people. We thought it was important to send the message clear to the international community. It was also important for us to create opportunities for Zimbabwean artists at that global stage. With respect to what has been happening over the years, we thought uh, this is a great opportunity for these artists to be seen and for these artists to say something about themselves because the exhibition was entitled Seeing Ourselves, Questioning the Geographical Landscape of the Spaces We Occupy from Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow. So we wanted to see ourselves. The idea of a microphone, we wanted to put it to rest because we have so many platforms where we were being represented, represented instead of us representing ourselves. So we thought this was an opportune moment for us to represent ourselves with our voice without a microphone. Can we uh, switch on to question and answer session? Absolutely, and, and that's wonderful. And, and just sort of going back to how it started and what's really created the consistency, because um, as we say in Africa, it takes a village. 
Uh, could you talk more about the village um, that has brought you here and the village that is actually taking us to the Venice Biennale in 2022? Well, I mean, the, the, the village, I, I'm, I'm surrounded by a number of village boys and village girls here. Uh, one of them being Devs Guja, who is a village boy, and uh, another village girl that is, being, uh, that is also here. We've got Jean Moxon, another village girl. And we also have um, um, other village girls that includes um, uh, Charity Manua and many others, and the village boy uh, called uh, Tejaravangu, Samanda and uh, another village boy, uh, Mr. Deketeke Nyamziwa. These are some of the people, and that also includes, I would like to go back to Tafuma Gutsa, another village boy from Murewa, um, Mishek Masamvu, another village boy from Honde Valley, and uh, Kelvin Dondo, another village boy, and Barry Biko, another village girl from Bulawayo. And Later on, we had Poshi Ashevaera, we had uh, Virginia Chihota, we had uh, Voti Tebe, and my late friend, Rashid. And also want to take this opportunity to pay tribute to those that have passed on from Rashid, Helen Liros, Derek Huggins, and many others, including uh, uh, Lazarus Takawira. And those are some of the village boys. Uh, Gareth Nyandoro is here with us, and... Um, Chiko Chazunguza, um, Admaya Kamzengerere, and there are a number of all those. And for the audience who are sitting here, I'm sure you, are, uh, you have the catalogs from the pixels of Ubuntu to uh, Sokorisina Msoro, uh, Dana Wabira, to uh, many others who also took part in the previous Venice Binale. Those are some of the village boys and village girls that have taken uh, the Zimbabwe to the Venice Binale. And I would like to pay respect to all of them because there is no exhibition without artists. And we need to understand that there is no cultural institutions without artists. Artists play a very important role for the existence of these institutions. This is why we leave our wet towels at home to come to work. This is why we, left, we leave all our beautiful homes to come to work early in the morning is because these artists are very important. They give birth to the artworks, and later on, we then take those artworks to be able to show them to the audience, to show them to the art lovers, to show them to the public. And I'm sure these village boys and village girls, they are very, very important, being part of the ecosystem of who we are as institutions and as National Gallery of Zimbabwe. Fantastic, Raphael. And just to go on to the artists, because um, in the way the, the art ecosystem is working globally today, artists are very much a forgotten part of that, believe it or not. And, uh, and, and what you've always done, as I mentioned earlier with the Zimbabwe Pavilion, is put artists at the forefront of that. This is why you boast uh, artists like Portia, uh, Kutzenai, and Virginia, you know, as part of the alumni of, of the Zimbabwe Pavilion. So just going, you know, back to just how, like, let's talk a little bit about the artists that are showcasing, that we're showcasing next year coming up. It would be great for the audience to learn a little bit more about them. I know some of them couldn't make it, but some of them are in the audience. I mean, from your point of view as the commissioner uh, of the Zimbabwe Pavilion, how, how do the process work? And how important are these artists to the current storytelling of, of what's happening in Zimbabwe? Firstly, it is important to understand that uh, the National Gallery of Zimbabwe, when we started the project, we have to shortlist artists. After shortlisting, we come out with a jury committee, and it is that jury committee that will select the artists that will take part in the next Venice Binale. And I'm happy to say Walen Mapondera, who is here, who works mainly from found objects. Terence Msekiwa, who is currently in New York, also works with found objects. And uh, Kresia Mukwaji, uh, one of the only female artists on the uh, group, also works with found objects, but mostly works with fabrics. 
and uh, currently she is prepared, uh, she's busy preparing the work, which is very, very powerful, but very feminine work and also looking at uh, the role of a woman in a society. Then um, with uh, Terence Msekiwa mix both stone sculpture and found objects, and I'm sure that mix alone is also trying to blend the history of the Zimbabwean stone sculpture, which is very, very important. Then uh, Muchatuta, who is based in Cape Town, is a diasporan artist because for us, the issue of a diaspora voice will never run away. All those voices, we need to include them because their voices matters. We cannot do without only those who are practicing in, the Afri in, uh, in Zimbabwe. So his work is mainly paintings, but they are based on personal stories and personal nar narratives of an artist who is working and practicing in the diaspora. Well, I mean, the Zimbabwean sculpture is some call it Shona sculpture. I would like to put it very precisely here. It's called Zimbabwean sculpture, not Shona sculpture, because not everyone who is a sculptor is Shona. And it was, um, it's a tradition that started many years ago. And you can track it right from the great Zimbabwe ruins up to the foundation of the Zimbabwean sculpture via Tengenenga Art Center via the National Gallery Workshop School that was founded by our founding father, founding director, Frank McEwen. And Tengenenga was founded by none other than Tom Bloomingfield, who was an Irish tobacco farmer. When it was no longer profitable during the sanctions, during the Federation, he turned that farm into a sculpture farm. And for Frank McEwen, who was based here, started the workshop school, which was just behind the National Gallery, and he was able to connect the Zimbabwean sculptors, that includes Bernard Matemera, Sylvester Mbai, and um, Joram Mariga, and many others. And those artists were able to showcase at ICI in London. They were, show they were showcasing and in, in Paris. They were showcasing at uh, MoMA in New York. And I'm glad to actually say that when the International Conference on African Culture in 1962 happened, one of the key persons that traveled all the way from uh, uh, America was none other than um, uh, the founding director of, uh, of MoMA, who actually came here to be part of the guest. And uh, Roland Penrose, who was the director of ICI, was also here. So those times, they were able to collect some of the work, which includes uh, Joseph Ndandarika, who is now in the MoMA uh, permanent collection. So that history alone, he has got us to where we are, and I would like to say we have to thank those that came before us because they paved the way. The tradition of the Shona, of the Zimbabwean sculpture is still here, and the young talent are actually exploring that. And in uh, a few years ago, we were able to take one of the founding fathers of the Zimbabwean sculpture, Sylvester Mbai, in 2017 at the Venice Biennale. So it was also in honor of that tradition that has started. But the painting and the use of found objects is the new mediums that have found their way into the Zimbabwean art scene. And since 1980s, when the National Gallery founded an art school, it has been able to thrive and to make a difference into what Zimbabwean art history is. But it did not just happen because of the National Gallery. We've got players like Canon Patterson in Cyrene Mission. You've got players like um, Father Hans Grober, who was a Swiss missionary at Serima Mission. He had players like Helen, the late Helen, and Derek Huggins, who founded the uh, Gallery Delta. The Gallery Delta have played an important role of nurturing a number of artists in this country. And many other centers like uh, Chapungu Sculpture Park, which was founded by Roy Guthrie. 
those centers contributed to the history of what Zimbabwean art is. And the directors that came before, uh, before myself and um, after Frank McEwen, uh, the late uh, Professor Kahari, uh, Christopher Till, who is now based in South Africa, and Cyril Rogers and many others. Well, what a beautiful history. And going back to the Zimbabwe Pavilion, um, how important is, is it? You know, we talk about the history of the Zimbabwe art and how rich and deep it is. Um, looking at the art ecosystem as we are today, and the supporters that we have locally and obviously in the diaspora, but how important is it to start building uh, a, a deep collective culture on the ground uh, that appreciates Zimbabwe art and the history that it has. And how can this Zimbabwe, the Friends of the Zimbabwe Pavilion, contribute to that? I'm sure people like uh, yourself as an investment banker, you play a very important role because we need the corporate world to understand why it is important to invest in art and why uh, countries where the freeze art fair happens in London the Amori Show, which is currently in New York, the um, Art Basel in, in Basel, and most of these art fairs are supported by the corporate across the world. In South Africa, you've got the Standard Bank. In Germany, you've got the Deutsche Bank, which supports the Freeze Art Fair, the Swiss Bank. You also have all these banks. Why are they supporting the arts? They see that art has a role to play. So it is up to us as the friends of the Zimbabwe Pavilion to be able to educate the corporate world. And I'm glad that um, uh, Batanai Matsika who is here from uh, Morgan & Co. They supported the project, which the exhibition you are seeing here uh, with us here. They've been supporting this project for the past three years. And this is their third edition. And they are a young company who have seen it fit to support the arts. But there's a need for us to have a collector base. When you have a collector base in Zimbabwe, it means all these artists that are collected by museums and private collectors across the world, they are going to be collected in Zimbabwe. They are going to be collected in Africa. They will be celebrated both abroad and at home. So it is important. This is why the National Gallery has decided to come out with the so-called Zimbabwe Pavilion Collection. The artists that go to Venice, some of the work is collected and accessioned into the permanent collection. It's because we have seen that most of these works are ending up not here with us, they will end up abroad with all those collectors. There's nothing wrong about the work being collected abroad, but there's something wrong about those works not being collected locally. So it is up to us here the audience and those who are listening to see to it that there's a need to grow an art ecosystem in the continent. And the art ecosystem that will actually be a future for the future generation. Absolutely. And I 100% agree with you. I mean, it's wonderful to have the international presence and visibility for Zimbabwean artists, but it's also important for them to be appreciated and also connected locally. Um, a lot of people uh, have, don't understand art as an, as an alternative asset, mm -hmm. but it is an asset. It's not just about supporting artists um, from uh, you know, a, a, um, a view of just uh, making sure that they can put food on the table, but it's also about sustainability of mm -hmm. the artist and also about appreciating what they produce. Mm. You know, artistic production is an, uh, is an asset. We've seen the immense success of Zimbabwean artists who have exhibited at the Venice Biennale, and it would be wonderful to, for those artists to be connected locally as well, and for that art to be appreciated locally. And this is why with this Friends of the Zimbabwe Big Pavilion program, we aim to reach out to corporates, you know, reach out to them and really talk to them about the importance of collecting art and actually what it does as an asset, um, an asset from an investment point of view. Mm -hmm. So we're linking arms with everybody on the ground and, in, and inviting you to join us again as friends, you know, on this journey. And this journey also means, could, could mean many things for how we join arms to so we will be doing programming around that and talking about arts as an investment as well. Um, and as you know, as uh, Raphael mentioned, you know, this is a 
time. There are other uh, corporates that are doing very well. There's Standard Bank, uh, F and B, um, to some extent, you know, and, and even Investec. But you know, globally, there's UBS, uh, there's Deutsche Bank, uh, JP Morgan, and Morgan Stanley to do it. And this is one key missing piece that we have on the continent. We need to create symbiotic relationships between the arts and between corporates as well. Um, it's about supporting the artists, but it's also about recognizing actually the value of our cultural equity. And we need to have more open and honest conversations about that. Mm. Okay, thank you, thank you, Frida. I would like to take this opportunity as a question and answer session where you can ask questions either to myself or to Frida. Uh, you can, your name and Um, the, the question, Frida, is, is, is basically to why we do not have uh, art collectors locally, which, which I, I, I'm sure we have partly answered that question to say there's a need to start educating our local audience. We have a role to play as National Gallery of Zimbabwe. We have got a role to play with our counterparts, the National Arts Council. I'm glad uh, the director, Mr. Moyo, is here. We all have a role to play to educate our people. We all have a role to play to also make sure that at least the initiatives that the government has started by making sure that arts and cultural studies are now in both primary and secondary school, we have to support those initiatives for us to grow that collector base because those are going to be the collectors of the future. But some of the audience, members of the corporates are here. They are hearing for themselves they're also willing to take part. They're also willing, that's why they're here. And those uh, small steps would help to grow an art collector base. I don't know if you want to add to that, Frida. No, absolutely. I think it's an education thing, and, and this is why we're here. We're here to spread the word. Uh, we're here to, to talk about it in a, in, a, in a more open way uh, and really create a collective culture. Because it's not just in Zimbabwe, it is across Africa, um, and we need to create that collective culture. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Wait. Sorry, just a follow up to you. Yeah. My name is Ben Kalagher. Uh, I'm just following up on that question. The perception uh, is that the, the arts that we are pursuing right now is expensive. Mm. Okay, I, 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 I hear you. This is why I, I think an exhibition of young artists like uh, this masked exhibition, one, it's for first time collectors because we have to look at it from a position whereby let's look at the art that we can afford. And I understand what you're saying and we have been always talking to some of the artists because you hear an artist, uh, a younger artist saying, my piece is 10,000. So we need to start educating, including the artist, to say when you're still young, let's look at how you are going to grow your name as a young artist. Not for you to say you have just finished university and you want your piece to be 10,000. I, I would like to confess, and I'm sure some of the artists are here, Gareth and Wallen are here. They started, and they were selling their work they started growing. And today, Gareth's work is now worth a lot more. But it is also up to you as a, a, a first time collector to also work with people like us and some of the galleries across Zimbabwe to, to say, where can I start? And where do you see these artists going? So that kind of education when we do exhibition for young artists is also a very, very important step 
towards making a collector. Because if somebody had collected a Gareth the time when he started, by now he could be talking of something. If somebody had collected a Porsche Ajavaira, Virginia Chihota, Mishek Masamvu, Gina Maxim, and uh, Kudzanai Violet Wami, we could be talking of something. Maybe Frida, you can add. Yeah, I, I can definitely add to this. And I think it, it speaks to what uh, Raphael highlighted earlier about, you know, artists not being collected locally but internationally. Because what's happening, uh, the trend at the moment is, is that our artists being collected internationally, they're being priced internationally. Mm. And these are the first prices on the market. And I've seen anything from $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 up. And these are for young emerging artists. Now, those prices can be afforded in, in the UK or in the US, but when you look at it locally, it's, it's not affordable. And if you look at the artist's experience as well, um, the price doesn't match up with their experience. Um, but what we need to understand, and this is why it's important to, to have programs like this and have the support of the National Gallery of Zimbabwe is, how do we support artists in early on in their career? Mm. And by supporting artists, we're also looking at supporting collectors as well. Mm. Because there's a thing with collectors now saying, well, I can't afford to be a collector. I have to say, I started collecting a long time ago, 20 years ago, and I collected anything from something that came from $500 upwards. Obviously, mm. as time went on, I could buy more expensive art, but I was just looking for good artists that I believed in. And I think there's such a wealth of artists out there that are affordable. The new collectors should be put off by saying, oh, the starting market, $10,000. Mm. Um, and we can work with you, definitely the National mm. Gallery and the galleries out there and the cultural centers out there can work with new collectors and let them know what's available. There's a lot of work that goes into collecting. You know, there are no quick fixes with this mm, because the art is really something we should love. You know, mm. and, uh, and so we need to look at it. We, we shouldn't always look at it as something we can do. It's something you can do. There are artists out there that, that can be supported at the lower level locally. There has been an immense amount of talent drain from Africa, and this is because artists are not collected locally. We mm. need to change that dynamic. Mm. And I would also want to add to what you said uh, last week which uh, in one of our meetings with uh, Batanai Matsika for Morgan and & Company. And she said not everything is for outside eyes. There's always something for the inside eyes. So this is why these projects like young artist exhibitions are always taking place here at the gallery. And some of the galleries, they also do those exhibitions. It's for you as uh, new collectors or uh, emerging collectors. You can also put your eyes and always ask uh, curators, there are many curators across in, in this country to say, what do you think about this young artist? What do you think? Is, this, is it okay for me to invest in this? So as a corporate, we can say, okay, invest in this artist. In the next few years, we'll be talking of something. So that's why there's no that collector base in Zimbabwe and across the continent. There's uh, black collectors in South Africa, but it's also very small. You've got the black collectors in Nigeria, but it's also very small. But it's also because there's no huge disposable income. But, but and I talked about collectibles. Art is a new collectible that we need to invest into. But when you invest into that, we are going to grow the Zimbabwean art ecosystem in this country and in Africa. Yes, Victor. Yes. Uh, I just want to thank the uh, and his partner for the information of the friends of the Zimbabwe Children that is in Africa. Here in Zimbabwe, we have a friend in Dallas, and I am really coming from the friend in Dallas. So I want to just uh, put a hand to the friend of the family that in any way, how can we help? Because we are like, we are like the same. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, thank you, Victor. Thank you. Say. Yeah. Thank you. My name is uh, Edwin Chitonga. This is the first time for me to attend this uh, August uh, session. My question is, there has been a lot of reference to the corporate world. To what extent is the corporate world involved? Thank you, thank you very much. I, I would like to, to, to go back to many years when uh, the National Gallery used to host what we used to call the Zimbabwe Heritage. The Zimbabwe Heritage was fully supported by the corporates. We are talking from Tanya Lorand, from the BAT, from Anglo-American to uh, BOC, to many of those corporates. And those are the old days of Tanya Roland, the old days of uh, the director of the British American Tobacco, and all those days have evaporated. And now we have got the, our own people who are now running the corporate world. And this is why we're coming back to say, can you bring us back to those glory days where the corporate used to take a leading role in supporting the local arts? And I remember, if I look at the catalogs at the Zimbabwe heritage, it is only the corporates. The government support was there, but the corporate was a huge supporter. And from next year, we are also launching, we want to bring back the Zimbabwe heritage, but it's going to be called the Zimbabwe Visual Arts Awards, which will award the visual artist. And that was the relationship with the corporate. So we want to be able to bring back the corporate for us to be able to join hands. And we are very grateful that uh, the CEO of Zim Papers is part of our board. It is that relationship, bringing in the corporate into our board to see how we can harness the contribution of the visual arts into the brand Zimbabwe. The contribution of the Z Zimbabwean visual arts into this whole globe global arts, arts scene. Because today, the Zimbabwean visual artists, as we are talking, some are exhibiting at the Amori Show, some are exhibiting at the France 2022, Africa 2020, which is actually in Paris at the moment, across France. Most of our artists, Gina Maxim, Virginia, Portia, um, Kuzanai Violet, Wami, they have become ambassadors of this country. And that ambassadorship brings business to Zimbabwe, brings a lot to the corporate world. So there's a need, and some of these artists, they are part and parcel of your customers in the corporate world, because they buy the product from the corporate world. They get services from the corporate world. The services they get from mobile phones, they subscribe. But there's a need for us to join hands to support the arts. Maybe Frida, you can add one or two from your own experience. Yeah, no, absolutely. And there's, there's And just, you know, adding on to what Raphael said, if we look at the art ecosystem, a lot of people think about it, they just think the artist, the gallery, the museum, but the art ecosystem is actually an economy in itself um, that includes education, uh, it includes the corporates in, in different ways, it includes technology, uh, uh, law, insurance, logistics, um, et cetera, et cetera, I could go on. And a lot of people, when they think of the arts, they don't think about its contribution to the economy, but it has a huge contribution to the economy. And it also attracts people to do business with the economy, mm -hmm. which is basically what Raphael said. So it's important to support the arts on the ground, to tell that story, um, for people to understand the culture. If you understand, and you're understanding the culture, it's surprising how the arts can act, act, actively foster greater business engagement on the ground as well. I mean, you've got your shipping companies. The shipping companies, we ship work. Containers are leaving Zimbabwe every day, from stone sculptures to paintings to photographs to anything. Then all that ecosystem is something which is, which is through the visual arts. So there's a need for us to be able to join hands because it is that food chain that, that, that we, we, we continuously ignore. So 
I think there's a need for us to join. I will take my last questions before I call upon our director of uh, the arts. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sure the arrival of COVID-19, one can say it's a blessing in disguise. This is a time for rebirth. This is a time for redesign and rethinking. But we also need to take kind of uh, small steps towards it. Uh, the idea of online galleries, the idea of online platforms, just as good as we are doing now, Frida, she's in London, um, we are here in Harare, and others are listening from across. So this is an opportune moment for us to rethink about how we can create visibility, because a lot of more people are at home. The content we are going to produce by uh, making sure that online exhibitions, I know I was talking to Jacques a few weeks ago where they are, going, they are doing online concerts. So all those initiatives are very, very important. And you, as a young gallery, you play an important role. It's not only the duty of the National Gallery, but all of us as gallerists. The little you are going to do from your corner and the little we are going to do from our corner will also help the visibility of the Zimbabwean artist. I think it is very important for us to be able to look at how we can promote the artists of this country because they are part and parcel of the ecosystem or the food chain of the Zimbabwean economy, of the fiscus of this country. So the little we are going to do, the more we are going to do, the better, and we'll make a difference for Zimbabwe, and not only for Zimbabwe, but for the continent at large. And those artists can be collected by both local collectors and collectors abroad. So Frida, maybe you can add one or two. Yeah, no, Raphael, I didn't hear the question, but, but, um, but yes, you know, galleries play such an important role um, because they are the distribution channel. Mm. Um, they are what is what is the important factor between the artists and uh, and between the collector as well. So we need those distribution channels on the ground. We need those distribution avenues up. I mean, galleries play an important role in the sense that they not only just sell the works but they help the artists to navigate their careers as well. So, I mean, from my point of view, uh, working with the National, Gall uh, the National Gallery of Zimbabwe, it's important that we join hands with commercial galleries and really spread the word out there, um, not just about the artists, but also about collectors and how collectors, um, we can be part of the growth of the ecosystem in general. So, you know, uh, no one is left behind in this. Um, we need to build those distribution channels. And in building those distribution channels, we'll help our artists to be more sustainable as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lena. Um, with those few, uh, with those questions that have gone, I would like to also thank you for the contributing. And uh, let me call upon uh, Dr. Samanda, who is our Director of Arts in the Ministry of Youth, Sports, Arts and Recreation, to give a, a vote of thanks. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Wachikukwa. Uh, for the sake of time, allow me to say all protocol is uh, observed. Uh, as government, we are excited uh, that the National Gallery of Zimbabwe, and in particular, the Zimbabwean Pavilion uh, in Venice, is starting to gain traction in that it will be having friends who will be supporting it here on home ground as well as abroad when uh, uh, it finally gets 
uh, the artworks put on stage at the theater. So we are grateful to that as government. Uh, I want to thank the National Gallery of Zimbabwe uh, for that uh, our vision of creating this uh, our platform where not only the, the artists themselves, but members from the corporate world, uh, members from the diplomatic uh, corps, come in uh, with the, the artists, uh, 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 people who come and revel on, on the creations that others do, being amongst us to sit and interact, uh, uh, exploring this idea of uh, 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 friendship, which is, was put there, uh, works very well from the local and growing it to the international with that interaction, with every one of us being a cog in it. Because as National Gallery alone, they cannot go far. We need the artists, we need the, 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 the corporate world, we need the, the collectors, we need the, 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 the curators who encourage those who create the work. So everyone in the ecosystem, uh, allow me to thank you for your time uh, that you, you have spared so that you are part and parcel of this uh, exercise of the, the pavilion. I could see other directors from uh, our, our parastatals uh, are here. Uh, it's, it's, it's showing the importance of supporting each other when, when we are coming up with good and great ideas for purposes of carrying out that which we believe is good. And I also want to thank the gallery for ensuring that this uh, discussion and, 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 and whatever is happening here is live streamed. One, it's appealing to, to the youths who are our potential collectors, who are our potential artists. Two, it is also uh, 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 taking cognizance of the new normal, that while we can do things physically, we can still do things uh, on virtual platforms and still combine that to, to, to assist ourselves to get as much mileage and outreach as is possible. Besides, it's creating history. Whatever was being discussed here also becomes a source of education necessary for those school children whom we want to nurture so that they become part and parcel of the artists and tomorrow's uh, collectors of our own stories that we do in the visual arts. Uh, 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 Ms. Chikukwa and your team, uh, the, 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 the person who is standing for the chairperson, uh, the diplomats uh, uh, and members from the diplomatic corps, artists, and whoever is spared time to come to, to this exercise. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart as government. And I wish that it's not going to end here. You become members of the, 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 the uh, 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 I mean, friends of the Zimbabwean Pavilion uh, 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 for fundraising, and also you go and advertise uh, to your friends and other corporate uh, uh, members. And I, by extension, Ms. Chikukwa, wish to say, invite others to come to the Zimbabwean Pavilion and see what, and hear the stories that our artists will be uh, putting across. I thank you. Uh, Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Samanda. And I would like to say uh, you can also extend our thanks to the Honorable Peace, if to the, P, uh, the PS, Dr. Chitepo, and to the Honorable Minister, Dr. Keste Coventry. Her continued support, it means a lot. But I would also want to take this opportunity to call upon one of the artists who is present here, so that people can see him, who is going to go to Venice next year, Mr. Wallen Mapondera. Yes, but I would also want to extend my very, very uh, most thank you to Area 46, who are live streaming here for us. Area 46 are one of the friends of the Zimbabwe Pavilion. Wow. They are doing this for the support. So let's give them a pam pam. Our collaboration with them is to make sure that at least the friends of the Zimbabwe Pavilion will get its visibility. So I would like to say thank you so much for coming. We have got the refreshments for you. We can have wine and drinks whilst we continue to network. And also to say to uh, my Chief Koti, thank you very much for coming, Chief. And thank you very much for the Chief's
kings and queens that are here. Tatenda, siabonga, asante sana.